ओके सो लेट्स सी इफ आई एम लाइव और नॉट लेट्स चेक द वीडियो क्वालिटी फर्स्ट check the video quality first yeah it's acceptable uh, i think so yeah so uh, i'll share this link on twitter now so maybe like this stream is completely out of sudden i, I was actually planning but i didn't have a, it in mind to uh, post it uh, anywhere also I have to add it uh, one more place. ओके सो आई थिंक वी आर ऑन एंड लेट्स वेट फॉर सम पीपल टू जॉइन मे बी आई ऑल्सो डू वन मोर थिंग also my the buzzing sound might go off right now <clears throat> okay so uh, let's start so in this video i am Uh, like what i am planning to do is write a disassembler and if you have been following me on twitter then you might know i have been working on a tool that i have been calling katana uh at the moment like katana can parse elf files for now and uh, like the my main goal was to like create some type of binary analysis tool that can uh, do like uh, create uh, call graphs and control flow graphs and like th- uh, things related to that also uh, like uh, if anyone finds that stream is not going well then do post it in comments here so uh, this uh, yeah so i was writing this and uh, in that process i had to write an elf parser because like there are elf parsers good elf parsers out there like if you go here leaf projects is there uh, like it is a complete binary instrumentation instrumentation tool and it's written uh, by cox lab they have they wrote triton i think and uh, like you can create elf files using this from scratch and like if you are beginner like if you i since i uploaded this on my in my friend circle also so if you are very beginner here then uh, elf file is basically the type of executable file in linux and uh, the same thing for windows is pe that stands for portable and executable files and in linux elf stands for executable and linkable format so like the any any executable you create by compiling any c c++ program or if you are writing a rust or, or any other uh, compiled program then it will be compiled to an elf file which will contain all of your code and then uh, when it is loaded by the operating system using the linker uh, the linker will parse elf files and it will uh, be, sorry uh, not the linker the loader the linker loader basically uh, it will parse the elf file it will try to understand where is the main function located and things and then it will begin execution like it uh, it will tell the operating system to okay uh, everything is loaded start executing now and every elf file requests interpreter <coughs> so this is a leaf project 
let me turn off dark mode for this so uh, like it's a complete binary instrumentation tool you can just load uh, elf file you see you can parse pe files and all and you can create elf files from scratch like you don't even have to load elf files you can just like uh, if you have a very good binary analysis tool then maybe you can uh, assemble a shell code and then throw it in your elf file and then just like create a new elf file and then you can run it but uh, my main goal is somewhat similar not exactly this uh, uh, because there are very various factors because leaf is kind of like created in a more directed way my tool is to help me only me for now so that's why i created an elf file for now uh, this elf parser can load uh, symbols segments sections and whatever we need so uh, there is a few like there are few things left if i go to to do uh, we have like complete resolving all relocations like i've parsed all the relocations but i haven't resolved all the relocations then we have patching uh, like basically the main goal of this l parser is kind of about patching and also that binary analysis part where i create a disassembly and analyze it Mm, but this is also related to patching because if i have a patcher then uh, maybe i can like try writing some packer of my own and something because like writing packer is also a good thing uh, like you can understand how packers work actually uh, yep so creating a new section create new segments like this this is related to patching because i can uh, the, the normal l file has let's say 20 segments uh, generally it doesn't have 20 segments let's consider 20 sections then if it has 20 sections i can create a new section where the new code relies and i can uh, set my own permissions and everything in that and then store it back to the l file that till that can then be executed and uh, then using this these patch things i can patch sequence of bytes and what not so uh, you can find this in any basic binary analysis tool binja or ida or, or gidra any tool that you like the thing i want to do now is like since i have kind of uh, support for reading l files and i can get uh, the text section the text section is the basic uh, section where all your executable code relies so when this program compiles everything goes to text section uh, every executable code goes to text section uh, so uh, i can retrieve text section now so like uh, to get text section i can just do uh, l section uh text and if uh, section uh, sorry elf dot get section uh, i can get uh, the, i can get the section using like the name text and text and then i can uh, tell uh, found text section and i think i have implemented print also so i can print information about this and uh, like you see this is all the relocation printed uh, here is the output of read elf and this is the output of katana so let's try bundling this and see what it does so you see uh, found text section and the name of the section is text the type is prog bits that means it contains uh, executable code then alloc executor so the section needs to be allocated and uh, it contains executable instructions then it contains some address information and the size uh, total size of the section like you can see it's quite huge uh, 95 kb around 95 kb and the address alignment is 16 bytes so uh, that's not like uh, since i have a base uh, like uh, api or base tool available to load the text section i was thinking that uh, also my goal is to write binary analysis and if you if i scroll over i can show you i was actually create working on uh, creating my own intermediate representation uh, i can use llvm's intermediate language uh, or representation but uh, the thing is that uh, llvm i i the the main thing is that i don't like uh, outer dependencies in my project uh, and nlvm is kind of huge and integrating it will be also like a huge task integrating it uh, to my like maybe there is an easy solution like you can just uh, make it and install it and then 
uh, include it in your project uh, from the default installed directories. Uh, but how I like uh, dependencies in my project is that uh, let's say when I change my system by development environment, then I just run a script and that loads up all the dependencies. But with dependencies like this big LLVM or any other, uh, it will take time. And also like if I create my own intermediate language, it will kind of help me. I don't know how long I can go, how far I can go, but it will be worth a try. So that's why I was creating this intermediate language, but looks like it uh, I it will have to be halted for now. Uh, because like before I was using Capstone for disassembly. So if you don't know about Capstone, uh, Capstone is all, a like pre-written disassembly framework. Now again, you might ask if there's already an, a disassembly framework, then why are you uh, writing your own disassembly framework? So first of all, uh, learning. I'll learn about the architecture a lot uh, because I'll be reading the spec and uh, eventually implementing slow by slow, like one by one, each and every uh, instruction. Uh, and second like if i uh, i can like the code will be uniform since i have written the code i am not uh, adding any dependencies the code will be uniform and whatever i write i'll know everything about it and also like some morality reasons i have uh, like i already told you i don't like much dependencies in my project i was okay with using capstone but turns out that it's uh, it might not look good uh, on like when in used in katana so um, that's why uh, and plus i also like programming so uh this stream is all about uh, disassembly so let's start uh to be honest i have written disassemblers for only some of the vms and if you don't know about like uh, let me give you a basic introduction on how like what we might be doing in this stream so uh, let me first create a scratch buffer. Uh, where should I create? Let's create scratch. So uh, if you don't know about like uh, what is disassembly and what is assembly like basic. So every instruction like when you compile a program. Uh, like if you know basic programming you must be knowing what is machine code right. So machine code is basic thing you know zeros and ones how computers work. Now your computer, whatever device you're using, laptop or uh, desktop or anything that you're using uh, should have a CPU, uh, like central processing unit. And that is responsible for all the computations and calculations your uh, computer is doing. Now how that works is take, it takes, it reads these machine codes and it performs set of instructions, set of operations. and each of these single operation is called an instruction. An instruction, you ins basically instruct your CPU to do this. You instruct your CPU uh, to read from this memory location to this memory location. Your, you instruct your CPU to multiply the value stored in um, memory location A to memory location B and store it back to memory location A. So that is a multiply instruction. Similarly, there are add instructions. Uh, subtract instruction move instructions and very much like there is a pretty family of instructions and then if you go advanced there are vectorized instructions and whatnot so uh, each of these instructions are executed by your uh, cpu now you know and uh, this assembly is like just above machine code assembly is like a mnemonic based writing of these instructions and machine code is just like zeros and ones. These instructions will be encoded in form of zero and one. But in assembly, you have things like move, let's say EX to uh, move EBX to EX. Uh, yeah, so the value in EBX move it to EX. So like if you write this in normal uh, programming language syntax, e, EX is equal to EBX. Uh, now EX and EBX are registers. Uh, if you don't know just like uh, there are different types of registers uh, uh, EX first of all there is AX that has AH and AL uh, so AH is the higher 8 byte part and AL is the sorry 8 bit part and lower 8 bit part so AH is higher AL is lower 
and uh, each of this uh, is one byte so ax is two byte okay so two byte then we have eax eax is basically uh, uh, four byte and rax we have that is eight byte uh, so this is basically 32 bits uh, this is basically 64 bits and this is 16 bits uh, so also you know architectures uh, like yours when if you have installed uh, an operating system on your own and or if you have gone through uh, basic architectures course you know what uh, x86 64 bit architectures are and this is where the idea comes from so all x86 architecture can have maximum of 32 bit register size and corresponding instructions and rax will have 64 bit register size or like x64 uh, CPUs will have x64 64 bit register sizes and uh, corresponding instructions so all of this and uh, we have these families and each of these families have an like corresponding identification opcode uh, like let's say we have uh, move instruction we have a set of instructions so move instruction we have we have add instruction we have sub instruction mul and let's say just these four instructions in your whole CPU. There are lots of other instructions like you have NOR, NAND, ZOR, and like even if you have uh, NX86 architecture, there are instructions to generate uh, keys for AES encryption. So, uh, like lots of instructions are there. I think total around th more than 1000 instructions in just in X86 uh, instruction set. If you leave uh, vectorized instructions, I guess including that there will be much more so move instruction uh, so let's say you have insert let's assume that the uh, opcode for this is uh, hex 56 then this is hex 57 now if you're writing disassemblers or working with you must know a hex and everything so hex 58 uh, hex 59 so whenever you're uh, like your uh, CPU is reading this sequence of bytes okay uh, the lowest uh, you say byte that you can have is a single byte <laughs> I can't I can't frame that in a well formed English sentence but like uh, normally your program is a set of just bytes 8-bit values a set of bytes and uh, your uh, PC uh, like your CPU is constantly reading from this stream of bytes and this stream of bytes is basically your compiled program okay and uh, there will be instructions in, in this sequence of bytes and how will your CPU identify these instructions it will identify using these values these opcodes so if it uh, gets a stream of uh, a byte that is exactly this then it will understand that the next instruction like this instruction is a move instruction and then it will check for its operand in the next few bytes like uh, if you are moving let's say uh, move ex to ebx sorry ebx to ex then the opcode might be hex 56 uh, hex 56 uh, 1 hex 1 and hex 2 so that's like uh, once it encountered this is a hex 56 byte it knows that it's a move instruction so it will fetch uh, like check the next two bytes to identify the registers and uh, get basically like uh, perform the operation then so this is kind of uh, like a layman term introduction to uh, disassembly and this is how basic uh, VMs uh, decode their assembly code. Now, <laughs> what I was trying to say was there are two types of instruction sets. So there are uh, there is a restricted instruction set, uh, uh, restricted size instruction set, and complex size instruction set. So basically, uh, the risk and CISC basically. Uh, risk C I S C instruction set uh, risk and CISC I forgot the full form so risk is reduced instruction set architecture and CISC is complex instruction set architecture 
so examples of risk is arm or mips or risk 5 in itself and complex instruction set architecture example is your intel very big example now the main difference is that in risk uh, the size of every instruction is same uh, like every instruction might be four bytes in size so you have like whatever your instruction data is it will be integral multiple of four but in complex instruction set your instruction size varies so first like uh, in x86 hex 90 stands for nop nop code so basically nop is like you do do nothing it's like an idle instruction so if if your cpu executes this uh, instruction it basically did nothing nothing changed in the cpu just like skipped this instruction kind of then i think hex c3 is for returning is a ret instruction so when you type in your c programs when you type return 0 or return some other value then uh, this return ex instruction is executed uh, so it returns back to the caller function and you see these are one byte instructions but there are instructions like move and all so that those instructions will need much more information than just one byte because uh, they have they have to know like whether it's a memory or operation you are moving uh, a value into register from a memory or into like a memory from register or you will have to know the size of the memory operand the size of the register operand and whatnot so the size will vary and i think uh, from what i've read the maximum size is that in uh, intel architecture has is 15 bytes of instruction and i think that's uh, that is for vectorized instruction set uh, but uh, normally i don't know i like i have never written x86 uh, disassembler so this is my first time writing this and i thought like why not do it live maybe um, make some fun of myself in front of everyone so whatever so uh, now you know what sys can risk instruction set is and now you have like a crude idea of what we'll be dealing with so uh, our instruction set will vary and using these bytes the instruction sizes vary and using these bytes we have to know whether uh, like the size of the instruction and if you want to know like read more about the instruction set there is a very awesome site named felix cloutier dot com uh, let it load any comments up until now no lol <laughs> well i don't know why it's not loading okay so x86 and amd64 instructions reference we will also need why is it not loading Hmm. Okay, I don't know why it's not loading, but this site is like a huge table of all these instructions and it describes these instructions in great detail. Now, I probably have a starting idea of how to write. So let's just search. If you are writing this for the first time, then you might just Google search how to write disassemblers to write x86 disassembler x86 just uh, like shorthand for 80386 i guess uh, for intel x86 architecture <coughs> then there is x86 64 architecture so as you can see take a look at section uh, of the 80386 uh, in ref programmers reference manual our disassembler is really just a glorified finite state machine like automata theory i think it's related to automata theory finite state machine as far as i know is that a like a machine and automata that have finite state a set of like defined finite state like normally any program that you write is i think a finite state because it can have finite states only depending on how you define what states i don't know much about automata theory but like i guess that's what it is so if the current byte is an instruction of the prefix f3 f2 or f0 so you have got a rep repni a rep a rep repi repni lock advance to next byte uh, check to see if the current byte is an address or address as byte 67 
so you see we are doing just byte comparisons and checking what's coming up next so check to see if the current bytes is operand size bytes check to see if current byte is segment override bytes uh, segment next byte is the opcode uh, if the opcode is 0f then it is an extended opcode and read the next byte as the extended opcode so you see the opcode size varies depending on the particular opcode read in the opcode decode mod rm byte and scale now i haven't paid much attention to mod rm and anything like this any time before uh, sib values so this time probably i'll be learning from this so we'll need a uh, intel architecture manual let's close all this first uh close 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 all these tabs just opened automatically while writing katana so i don't know okay i guess no one joined yet Okay. Okay, so obviously I am not that famous, so why will anyone join? So Intel um, x86 architecture PDF. Intel 64 and i32. Uh, Intel 64 and i32 architecture developer manual. Now, IA thirty two and IA sixty four are completely different instruction set. IA sixty four you probably won't see that in normal laptops and desktops. So you see Intel uh, notational uh, conventions, byte, byte and byte order, reverse bits and software compatibility, instruction operands, uh, um, new syntax for CPU and instruction format. Instruction format for protected mode, real address mode, and virtual eight zero eight six address mode. Okay, uh, yeah. So there are different types of modes that we might have to separate, but that is, I think, for emulation. If you are emulating, then you might have to worry about protected. But if you are just disassembling, I don't think we have to worry about different modes. We just have to disassemble, read, and disassemble. Yep. So instruction format for protected mode, real address mode, virtual address mode, instruction prefixes, opcodes, mod RM, sub byte, displacement, immediate byte, and what not. Instructions A to L. Add with carry A D. Let's see add instruction. So add instruction. The these are the opcodes for add instruction. Opcode IB, opcode IW, opcode ID. Immediate byte, immediate word, immediate double. I think and rex. So you see if the opcode is hex four or hex five or hex six, hex eighty, hex eighty one, hex eighty three. This is just like okay. This is just for add instruction. Uh, instruction operand encoding. There are no operand three and operand four in add instruction. For example, uh, what RM? Uh, okay, I think RM is for register or memory. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. So I will download this. to be able to read this more properly uh let's save it here yep there are more downloads so let's just intel x86 complete programmer manual pdf architecture software developers manual and then there is amd 64 or you actually commonly referred to as x86 64 so that is the next step after x86 instruction set software 
developer manual uh, so we might need this uh, but not now i think or maybe because most of our programs is in x86 uh, 64 format so when is this written so is the same thing same thing let's just open this uh, desktop wrapped and here we have okay notational conventions so this manual uses specific notation for data such as format symbolic representation of instruction sign for hexadecimal and binary numbers review of this notation makes the manual easier to read button byte order so illustrations of data structure in memory smaller addresses appear toward the bottom of the figure illustrations of data structure in memory uh, smaller addresses appear to the bottom of figure addresses increase toward the top okay so whatever table is shown this is always the smallest uh, address and this is always the highest address as you can see uh, bit positions are numbered from right to left the numerical value of the set bit is equal to 2 raised power uh, what 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 2 uh, raised so the numerical value of the bit is okay this is just like the written indian um A32 processes are little Indian machines. This means the bytes of the word are numbered starting from the least significant byte. So, yeah, kind of reverse order stored. Reverse bits in software compatibility in many cases the memory layout description contains bits that are reserved. Uh, certain bits that are reserved in memory many register and memory layout description certain bits are marked as reserved. When bits are marked as reserved, it is essential for compatibility with future. Processes that software treat this uh, bits as having a future, though unknown effect. Uh, the behavior of preserved bits should be regarded as not only undefined but unpredictable. Software should blah blah blah. Instruction operand. When instructions are represented symbolically, a subset of I32 I assembly is used. In this subset, an instruction has the following format. So label, mnemonic, argument, and argument one, argument two, and argument three. So um uh, to show you this here so label you might have start in general start and then you will have move ex or let's say zor ex ex this will zor uh, ex with ex and this will have a return instruction what are so you see this is the label and this is the instruction and this is the uh, argument 1 and argument 2 i also called uh, operand 1 and operand 2 and this is the operation uh, zor with itself if you know if you don't know it's uh, equivalent to setting it the value to 0 so ex will be 0 in this case so uh, when a session are uh, yeah so where label is an identifier which is followed by a colon so you see label start and it is followed by a colon and a uh, mnemonic is a reserved name for a class of instruction of code which have the same instruction so zor is basically a class of instruction set because like why it's a class because zor th in this case it is for 64 bit we can write it this simpler in this simple way because your assembler will be able to understand the operand size and something uh, like the related uh, of code that will be related to this zor instruction this specific zor instruction but if you are writing this byte by byte then you will have to specify the instruction of code then uh, the size of the operands and then the operand themselves but you are in like your assembler will make things lot easier so uh, operands argument on argument 2 and argument 3 are optional uh, like you can see red uh, is of red doesn't have any argument so That's why they are optional. There may be from zero to three operands depending on the opcode. 
when present they take the form of either literals or identifiers for data items uh, operand identifiers are either reserved names of register or are assumed to be assigned to data items declared in another part of the program which may not be shown in the example so yeah, you can have section a data section like you can describe section dot data here you have section dot text this is the text section this is the data section and you can define like uh, var uh, db uh, 0 so this is var is equal to 0 of 8 bits like 1 byte the size of this variable is 1 byte and you can basically have move var ex so this will move the value in ex to uh, this var in variable var data uh, that's what i think it's referring to so assign to data items declared in another part of the program when two operands are present in arithmetic or logic instruction the right operand is a source and left operand is the operand and the left operand is a destination okay so as you can see when two operands is present in arithmetic or logical instruction the right operand is source so you have basically something like this so instruction mnemonic then you have destination <coughs> and you have source something like this so as you can see is zor it tells zor ex with ex and store it back to ex uh, so for example move ex subtotal so this subtotal is the des is the source ex is the destination and move is just the mnemonic in this case load reg is a label move is the mnemonic identifier of an opcode ex is the destination operand subtotal like this is the obvious part you already know this but i'm just reading this i don't know why so hexadecimal binary numbers you should know this segmented addressing uh, processor uses byte addressing this means that memory is uh, organized and accesses sequence of bytes you see this means memory is organized and access a sequence of bytes whether one or more bytes are being accessed a byte address is used to locate a byte or bytes in memory blah, blah, blah. segment register byte address so processor also supports segmented addressing this is a form of addressing where a program may have many independent address spaces called segments so you might have a readable segment writable segment uh, and a readable and executable segment a readable and writable a segment and things like that for example program can keep its code instructions and stack in separate segments code addresses would have to refer to the code space the stack addresses would always refer to the stack space the following notation is used like this was basically introduced for uh, security purpose so that um, one cannot uh, like if your code segment is marked as only readable and executable and there is no writable flag assigned to it so you cannot write to your executable uh, code segment so basically uh, this will protect some type of bugs that like can overwrite instructions in your memory and change your program behavior like if you have let's say you have a write primitive where you can write to anywhere in program and if you try to write to this uh, segment then it will basically check fault or something like that then there is a, there are exception and exception is an event that uh, blah this i don't think we will need we'll just we just want to know the instruction format and new syntax for cpu id msr values uh, we, we want to know this instruction format of uh, for protected mode real address mode and virtual 8086 mode 8086 mode is a 16 bit mode i guess protected mode and real address mode so this is the uh, instruction format you have instruction prefixes then you have an opcode then mod rm byte sib uh, one byte if required displacement immediate okay so hmm mod reg r code register of memory i guess scale index base
टू बाइट्स थ्री फोर फाइव थ्री बाइट्स एंड सिक्स सेवन जीरो वन टू सो थ्री थ्री एंड टू ओके सो इंटेल सिक्सटी फोर एंड आई ए थर्टी टू आर्किटेक्चर इंस्ट्रक्शन कोडिंग आर सबसेट ऑफ द फॉर्मेट शोर एंड फिगर टू वन इंस्ट्रक्शन कंसिस्ट ऑफ ऑप्शनल इंस्ट्रक्शन प्रफिक्स इन एनी ऑर्डर प्राइमरी ऑफ कोड बाइट्स आई थिंक आई ऑल्सो माइट वॉन्ट या दिस ए एम डी गाइड एक्स एटी सिक्स सिक्सटी फोर प्रोग्रामर रेफरेंस मैनुअल इज दिस जस्ट इट इंटेल आर्किटेक्ट इंटेल manual downloads software development manuals i just want to compare whether it's like this writes ie64 but to let have of codes You see, it has no reference to uh, RAX or registers like that. That's what I'm concerned about. Hmm. No. So yeah. Application, application notes and write the best. this should have everything that you will need i think this is around 5000 pages Where is it uh, wrapped? Wait, what? Yeah, five thousand sixty pages, and this should contain everything that you will need. About this manual basic execution and event instruction set summary. These are the different types of instructions that you have: general purpose instruction, FPU instruction, MMX instruction, and 64-bit mode instruction. Uh, like procedure calls and interrupts. This will describe everything about the Intel architecture. We want general purpose. Instruction set reference A to L instruction format. The following is the instruction format 
for each instruction described in the chapter the heading below introduces the example cmc complement carry in session format so <coughs> this is system programming guide so if you are writing operating system then you might want to go through this model specific registers but let's go down and see okay this is same as the one that we have I am confused. Intel sixty four and IA thirty two. Do we need AMD sixty four? AMD sixty four programmer manual PDF. All volumes combined. Whatever. Let's just download this part. If part if it doesn't have this. This is volume one. Ah, uh, some volume one, volume two, volume three. Ah, uh, we we'll need to go to revd. Store it here. Store it here. Store it here. Okay, so let's open everything. Volume one. Instruction, uh, introduction, modes of operations. Okay, we have RX and all the registers here. This is operating mode. Uh, we don't want to know about that instruction set. These are the various instruction streaming MD instruction set. MMX insertion, x86, FPU insertion, floating point insertion, modes operation, long boat, uh, codes compatibility mode, legacy mode, memory model, memory organization. Hmm. Also, one thing uh, that we have to worry about, like, is the mode of disassembly I wonder if we will be able to write anything today <laughs> okay I should have come prepared but whatever let's just see general purpose programming registers these are the registers uh, we have this much register I know all this uh do you have an instruction format okay instruction summary move we see move family syntax Okay, uh, let's see manual 2. This is system programming. What is manual 3 then? Uh, we have instruction format here. So, uh, prefix, rex prefix, opcode, 1 or 2 bytes, mod rm, sib. Uh, displacement and session length less than equal to 15 bytes this is good this is much better than I think than Intel description of this what is this uh, this is same as this one so Rex prefix is optional but if used you must immediately uh, but if used must be immediately before the opcode uh, it mentions but 
but it does not show this uh, so I think we will take reference from both of these not just one of them because both are good manual so I think this arrow shows optional or something I don't know let's just see so an instruction can be between 1 and 15 bytes of in length let's take a look at the stream hey csc nahi khel ra uh, okay so concurrent viewers there are no viewers right now So, uh, an instruction can be between 1 and 15 bytes in length. Uh, figure 1 1 shows a byte order and instruction format. Instructions are stored in memory in little Indian order. Okay, instructions are also stored in little Indian order. The least significant byte of an instruction is stored in its lowest memory address. As shown in figure 1 2 on page 2. Okay, so instruction format starts from here. The format of an instruction encodes in its format of an instruction encodes in its operations as well as the locations of the instruction operand and the result of the operation. This uh, section describes the general format and the parameters used by all instructions. For information on the specific formats of each for each instruction, see general purpose instruction reference. Okay, so chapter three is general purpose instruction, but we want uh, basic introduction because I don't know no I know nothing about the instruction format so instruction byte order instruction byte and in 0 and 15 bytes in length instructions are stored in memory in little linear order the least significant byte of a memory of an instruction is stored in the lowest memory address as shown in figure 1 to 1 page 2 so Okay, and page two. Most significant bits, highest memory address, and least significant bits, lowest memory address. You see, there are legacy prefix and rex prefix of code. Okay. Available only in 64 bit mode optional depending on the instruction optional with most instructions okay so plus means uh, you see star means optional depending on the instruction that we are using and this and all our two byte upwards have this and this is less than 15 bytes okay So the basic operation of an instruction is specified by an opcode. The opcode is one or two bytes long, as described in opcode on page 20. An opcode, a uh, basic operation of an instruction is specified by an opcode. An opcode is one or two bytes long, as described in opcode. So you see, we have uh, one byte or two byte opcode, and the first byte of uh, two byte opcode will always be hex fh. So H is basically just hex, so hex F. Uh, and opcode can be preceded by any number of legacy prefixes. These prefixes can be classified as belonging to any of the five groups of prefixes described in instruction prefixes. So an opcode can be pre uh, preceded by any number of legacy prefixes. These prefixes can be classified as belonging to any of the five groups of prefixes described in instruction prefixes. Uh, okay, I'll check that later. The legacy prefixes modify an instruction's default address size, operand size, or segment, or they invoke a special function such as modification of the opcode, atomic, atomic bus locking, or repetition. The rex prefix can be used in 64 bit mode to access the register extensions illustrated in application programming register set uh, in volume 1. Okay. If a rex prefix is used, 
इट मस्ट इमीडिएटली प्रोसीड विद द फर्स्ट ऑफ कोड बाइट ओके बट रेक्स प्रेफिक्स इज ऑल्सो ऑप्शनल एंड इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ कोड कंसिस्ट ऑफ वन और टू बाइट इन सेवरल वन ट्वेंटी एट बेट सिक्सटी फोर बेट इन इंडिया इंसेशन लाइक इसी ऑपरेंट साइज और रिपीट इंस्ट्रक्शन बाइट इज यूज इन स्पेशल पर्पज वे टू मॉडिफाई द ऑफ कोड ओके आई कम बैक इन अ मिनट हैव टू टेक अ स्मॉल ब्रेक ओके बैक सो इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ कोड कंसिस्ट ऑफ वन आर टू बाइट वी नो इन सेवरल वन नाइटी एट बंड सिक्सटी फोर बट मीडिया इंस्ट्रक्शन लेग इसी ऑपरेंट साइज और ऑफ कोड कैन बी फॉलोड बाई मोड रजिस्टर मेमरी मॉड आर एम बाइट सो ओके सो मोड रजिस्टर विच फर्दर डिस्क्राइब्स द ऑपरेशन एंड और ऑपरेंट्स द ऑफ कोड और द ऑफ the op code or the op code and mod rm byte can also be followed by an sib uh, byte scale index base uh, which describes the scale index and base forms of the memory addressing so mod rm and sib bytes are described in mod rm sib bytes in page 20 but their legacy functions can be modified by rex prefix in session directions instruction 18 byte instruction prefix length limit can also be exceeded by using redundant prefixes if the limit is exceeded a general protection exception occurs uh, okay uh, the redundant prefix okay so 18 byte instruction prefix limit can also be can only be exceeded by using redundant instruction prefixes wow so instruction prefixes so instruction prefixes shown in figure 1 uh, 1 legacy prefix and so we have two types of prefixes legacy and rex okay so legacy and rex prefix each of the legacy prefixes has unique byte value by contrast by contrast the rex prefixes which enable the use of amd64 register extensions in the 64 bit mode 
are organized as a group of byte values in which the value of the prefix indicates the combination of register extension features to be enabled uh, table 11 on page 4 shows the legacy prefixes that is all the prefixes except the rex prefixes legacy prefixes all the prefixes except the rex prefixes page 4 where is page which page is this oh, this is page 3 these are all the legacy prefixes so you have operand size override and mnemonic is none the prefix byte is 666 address size override uh, okay okay so let's uh, how can i store this hmm let's store the important sections of this pdf to some common place okay and i'd like to store this in uh, my notion dot so okay don't ask me for password now please loading 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 whatever so we have a uh, table which has uh, the legacy prefixes are organized into five groups as shown in the leftmost common table the single instruction should include a maximum of one prefix byte from each of the five groups the legacy prefixes can appear in any order within the position uh so in figure 11 for legacy prefixes the result of using multiple prefixes from a single group is unpredictable okay so some uh, of the recessions on legacy prefixes are operand size override the prefix affects only the general purpose instructions and a few x86 instructions x87 instructions when used with 128 bit reinstruction these prefix acts as a special way and modify the output address size override these prefix affects only memory operands okay segment override uh, in 64 bit mode the csd acm and or fxs are ignored yeah because 64 uh, bit system removed the segmentation concept uh, it's supported in 64 bit processes uh, but uh, it's just for compatibility with the older processes but not because it wants to keep it so lock prefix this prefix is allowed only with certain instructions so that modify memory okay repeat prefixes these prefixes affect only certain string instructions which when used with 128 bit media instruction these prefixes are used way to modify the opcode or at in a special way to order the code so these are the five groups operand size override address size override segment override so the very first byte of an opcode can be one of this uh one of these if it is not one of these then it should be of the type rex if it is not rex then it should be opcode right Uh, so let's read so address side change the default operand size of memory or register operand and shown in figure table 1 page 5 changes the default address size of memory operand so operand size override address size override default address size of the memory operand is shown here okay then we have segment override each of these values represent a different segment forces the use of cs segment for memory operands what is the use of current ds segment for memory operand uh, but uh, 
this is not used in 64 bit format as it said here in 64 bit format these segment or right prefixes are ignored then lock single section should include a maximum of one prefix from each of these each of the five groups single section should include a maximum of one prefix okay so there can be maximum of one prefix then okay okay from each of the five groups yeah as it said because if you use other than okay so how do we compare between rep and rep e or rep z okay rep e and rep z are equal because this is rep equal or rep zero this is rep not equal rep not zero so in uh, x86 equal or zero uh, suffix in any instruction are same or similar in most of the cases so repeats the string operation RCX racer is compared until the RCX racer is zero or the zero flag is clear to zero. Operand size in override prefix. The default operand size of an instruction is determined by a default operand size of an instruction determined by the combination of its opcode. The D bit in the current code segment descriptor and the current operand the current default bit the current uh, operating mode. Hmm. Anything on where is Google? Uh, no. Okay. Hmm. This is also not loading. Okay, what is happening? 
and this one leave this so we have these prefixes and then these are the descriptions so let's read these descriptions if that's what we have to do to write a disassembler uh, so default operand size for instruction is determined by a combination of its of code Okay, so if you have an operand prefix of uh, operand size override prefix, then it will set the non-default operand size. So usually the operand size of an instruction is determined by the uh, combination of an opcode and code segment descriptor. Code segment descriptor, like it's related to operating system development. Uh, I think when you are changing operating system mode. that plays some role you basically have to create a disk a pointer basically a struct there is a struct that you have to fill up with valid details and store it somewhere i think there is some instruction where you load it is somehow in this code, cs descriptor then cs descriptor points to that memory location and cpu refers to that memory location for knowing the different uh, permissions on code and what not so this is one type of permission the operand size i don't think i was able to explain it very well but like when i was writing my like the operating system uh, i came across it the prefix can be used with any general purpose instruction and accesses uh, non fixed size operands in memory or general purpose accesses prefix can be used with any general purpose instruction that accesses non fixed size operands in memory okay it can also be used with x86 uh, fld nv whatever so don't have to worry about that for now the 64 bit mode the prefix allows mixing of 62 bit 32 bit and 64 bit data on the instruction by instruction basis in compatibility and legacy mode the prefix allows so no indicates that the default operand size is used yes what does yes indicate the incompatibility and legacy mode the prefix allows mixing of 16 bit and 32 bit operands on instruction by instruction basis okay effective operand size there is 6x66h okay this makes some sense so we know this is how like i don't think reading line by line would be a good idea so we know the first is the prefix let's read about rex now 
log prefix log prefix causes certain kind of memory assertion to occur automatically the mechanism for doing so is implementation dependent for example the mechanism may involve bus signaling or packet messaging segment override prefixes okay rep Uh, repeat prefixes. Repeat prefixes. Repeat ins. Ins b. F three is rep, right? If you go up for rep, we have F three for rep or rep equal, and for rep not equal, we have uh, this F two. okay yeah so this is the rep and other instructions after this so rep and compare some type of compare memate permit and have identical opcodes Rec basically register extension. So Rec's prefixes are group of instruction specific prefixes that can be used only in 64-bit mode. They enable access to AMD 64 register extensions. Uh, figure one one on page one and figure one two on page two show how Rec's prefix fits within the byte order of Rec instructions. Uses of extended GPR or XMM registers. Use of 64-bit uh, use of extended GPR. GPR is general purpose register or general programming register. You can call it. Use of 64-bit operand size when accessing GPRs. Okay, so uh, yeah, that makes sense. So when you are in 60 like 64-bit mode, uh, when you are in 64-bit mode, uh, you will have a rex prefix to tell you uh, that. Uh, this is not an EX register. This is an RX register. I think that's what happening here. And 64 bit use of extended control and debug registers as uh, there are CR 0, 1, 2, 3, I guess, and DRs in this 64 bit mode extended control register debug register. Uh, these are in volume 2. Okay, we might take a look at that. Table 1 now shows the rex prefixes. The value of rex prefix is in the range 40 hex to uh, 40 f hex. Depending on the particular combination of AMD 64 registers desired. Okay, so total of 15 values this has. What is Rex W R X and B? Scale Rex prefixes. A Rex prefix is normally required with an insertion that access 64 bit GPR on one of the extended GPR or XM embraces. Only a few insertion have operand size that defaults to 64 bits in 64 bit mode and thus do not need Rex prefix. These instructions to the normal rule are listed in table 110. And instructions can have only one rex prefix, although the prefix can express several extension features. Uh, if rex prefix is used, it must immediately precede the first of code byte in instruction format. Okay. Uh, instruction can have only one rex prefix, although the prefix can express several extension features. Uh, if RX prefix is used, it must immediately proceed with the first override. This way, okay. Any other emplacement of RX prefix or any other insertion does not access and register and is ignored. That does any other uh, placement of RX prefix or any use of RX prefix in insertion that does not access an extended register is ignored. 
legacy in session size is limit okay we are have to worry about what tkm in very no no but for now i'm just trying to skim through this in sessions not requiring a rex prefix in 64 bit mode so enter uh, call enter jcc jump uh, instruction leave instruction move instruction Okay, so this rex dot w is width, I think. Okay, this is quite exhausting. How does this? instruction of mother i mean this of codes of codes are ap relative addressing these are different addressing modes instruction subsets Okay, so we can get op codes from here and here. Op codes and text notation. One byte op codes. Hmm. I wonder if is Felix Cloutier is here to help. We are 1 hour 24 minutes into the stream and still not able to find out
I guess I'll have to abort this stream for now. Come back after reading and researching a bit. And then maybe start writing. But from what I can see here. This is mod rm which will the value of mod rm. One byte of code. Okay. Okay, so zero one zero zero is add, and zero zero to zero six is add. Zero zero to zero five is add instruction. Okay. Then we have ADC, AND, and similarly ZOR and these instructions. These are all one byte of codes. This gives the first nibble, and this is the rest of the nibble. Uh, zero to seven is each bit. So if uh, and at a time I think only one of these can be flagged. So table sh shows these opcodes which have low nibble as in zero eight to f h range and in both tables uh, zero to f h high nibble column shows. Okay, so let's say have a jump instruction. So jump below instruction uh, the opcode will be. Uh, hex 72 for that uh, so that will be jump below jump not below will have hex 7 uh, uh, sorry hex 7 this will be hex 7 4 uh, for jump below for jump not below we will have hex 7 8 okay so I am understanding this not that hard I am getting idea of how this will work Probably we won't be able to code it in this just this video. Okay. Two byte instructions the prefix the first nibble up to XF and this byte. Okay.
Okay, so I think I'll end the stream now. I'll probably have to go through this and this. A to L instructions. Let's see A D A D D. Okay. Okay, I think I'll end the stream now. Uh, I'll continue.